Hello everyone, myself Dr. Amit Maheshwari. In this video, we are going to discuss one case study on classical galactosemia. So let's start. The description part is a four month old male child presents with the history of repeated loss of consciousness and refusal to feed specially milk and milk containing diet. On examination, baby was found to be mild ectric and bilateral cataract was detected. Liver was palpable below the costal margin. And the description part hints are there is a refusal to feed specially milk and milk containing diet. On examination, baby was having jaundice and there is a bilateral cataract and liver was palpable. That means there is a hepatomegaly. Now, what are the investigations done? So the investigation part are blood sugar level was 72 milligram per deciliter that is below than the normal plasma free galactose level that is 129 milligram per deciliter that is elevated serum uric acid that is 8.4 milligram per deciliter again it is elevated blood lactic acid is 4.8 millimole per liter again it is elevated rbc galactose 1 phosphate level is 54 milligram per deciliter again it is elevated and rbc galactose 1 phosphate uridyl transferase activity was absent so from the investigation there is a decrease in the sugar level there is increase in the free galactose level there is increase in the lactic acid there is increase in the uric acid there is a increase in the galactose 1 phosphate level and there is absence of galactose 1 phosphate uridyl transferase activity now let's see what are the questions the first question is what is the probable diagnosis in this case and what is the biochemical defect in this case so from the description and from the investigation part we can say that this is the case of classical galactosemia fine this is the case of classical galactosemia which occurs due to the deficiency of galactose 1 phosphate uridyl transferase enzyme fine and it is inherited as a autosomal recessive disease Galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase is the enzyme which convert galactose 1-phosphate to the glucose 1-phosphate. Fine. And if there is a deficiency of this enzyme, then it results in a galactosemia. So this is the picture showing the galactose metabolism. Fine. So that is the answer of the first question. And hence we have already dis uh, discussed in the previous slide that why this is the case of classical galactosemia. Explain the biochemical region for above clinical signs and symptoms. So the first clinical sign and symptoms uh, were the hepatomegaly, that is enlargement of liver. So this hepatomegaly occurs due to the accumulation of galactose 1-phosphate in the liver. And accumulation of galactose 1-phosphate is because there is an absence of enzyme related to the galactose metabolism that is galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase so there will be no conversion of galactose 1-phosphate to the glucose 1-phosphate this that will result in an accumulation of galactose 1-phosphate in the liver and ultimately hepatomegaly then there is a presence of recurrent hypoglycemic attack and we have seen in the investigation part that blood glucose level is low so this is because galactose 1-phosphate which is accumulated is going to inhibit the glycogen phosphorylase enzyme. Glycogen phosphorylase enzyme is the enzyme for the glycogenolysis. Fine. So it will inhibit the glycogen phosphorylase enzyme. So there will be no glycogenolysis and there will be no release of free glucose. So ultimately it will result in a hypoglycemic attack and ultimately it will result in an unconsciousness. Fine. So that is the second uh, clinical sign. Then third is the cataract. Cataract occurs because in galactosemia there is an absence of galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase enzyme which will result in an accumulation of galactose. Now this galactose, it will be reduced to galactitol via polyol pathway via one enzyme that is known as a aldol reductase. And so it will be converted to the galactitol and this galactitol will attract the water molecule because it has a osmotic activity fine and because of this uh, attraction of water molecule there will be the there will be the development of cataract in the lens so that will result in a lens cataract formation and in the galactosemia there will be the bilateral cataract and it is 
congenital one. Right? So that is one of the main characteristic feature that you will see in case of classical galactosemia that is bilateral congenital cataract that occurs due to the accumulation of galactitol. Right? And this cataract in most of the cases is mild and it is transient and it is reversible provided dietary treatment with lactose and galactose free diet starts early within 20 days of life. Right? So that is the third clinical feature and biochemical reasoning behind it. Now question number three is what is the urinary finding in this case? As uh, in uh, galactosemia as there is a accumulation of galactose and galactose 1-phosphate right? so there will be the galactosemia and this galactose will also be excreted in the urine which result in a galactosuria. And now this galactose is a reducing sugar, so it will give the Benedict test positive. Right? Benedict test done in urine of such patient give positive result as galactose is a reducing carbohydrate. So that is the urinary finding. Then what is the treatment regime suggested for this child? So the treatment regime for this child is the starting of the lactose and galactose free diet as soon as possible. Fine. There is a starting of the lactose and galactose free diet and this diet should be started within 10 days of life and delay in the starting the treatment result in organ damage and low IQ and once mental retardation sets you cannot do anything and this a special diet can be withdrawn after 4 to 5 years of life once alternative pathway which is activated by galactose 1-phosphate pyrophosphorylase becomes active. So that is the treatment regime. Fine. And despite adequate treatment from an early age, children with classical galactosemia remain at increased risk for developmental delays, speech problems, and motor dysfunction. So that is the question number four. So that is all about the questions related to this case. Now, apart from this, other important point related to this case is food items need to be avoided in galactosemic baby is the breast milk, cow milk, casein, whey containing food medications having galactose and lactose to be avoided in galactosemia. So these are the foods to be avoided in case of galactosemia. Another thing is prenatal screening is also possible in the galactosemia by doing amniocentesis. And in the amniocentesis, we can observe the activity of galactose 1-phosphate urethral transferase enzyme. Fine. We can observe the activity of galactose 1-phosphate urethral transferase enzyme. So we can diagnose the case of classical galactosemia before the birth of child. So that is the case discussion of classical galactosemia. Thank you for watching. Thank you.